Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to have some UFC 5 online ranked gameplay, and it's going to be across several divisions, but the first one to start with is in the lightweight division. As you can see, at the time of recording this video, I was in uh, division 8 to start with, but as you can tell on the bottom right-hand side and the title of this video, this is how... I got to Division 20, what playstyle I used, I think I've got a 76 and 150 records um, in the sort of top 500-ish in the world, but not that that means anything to, to be honest with you. And yeah, I'm just going to showcase to you guys what I did in order to, to get here. I've been in Division 20 for a while now, to, to be honest with you, and um, what you should be able to see, which is great, is a linear progression throughout the video. So, uh, it will, they should progressively get better, and you should see that I will be getting more comfortable as the videos uh, go across and the gameplay clips show. Um, these, like I said, the first one starting in Division 8, and then it slowly builds up. So, I believe the last gameplay clip is in Division 20. But I've got a lot of um, gameplays ready to turn into videos and showcase to you guys um, using a variety of fighters but again any content suggestions please let me know in the comments below and i do really appreciate all the support as of lately and um, channels growing really well and hopefully ufc5 is the year that we transition and uh, turn into a bigger name and form a big community and yeah just just let me go know if you guys are enjoying the content so you can see here that i am using charles de bronx uh the champ has a name against conor mcgregor and right now i'm still figuring out the game like i said this was only in division eight but realistically i do know what i want to do i love that team kick animation as well uh, I'll, I'll be entirely honest ufc5 is is quite fun it is flawed and there is um Quite a variety, I'd say, of issues. As you can see, if you if you do have Twitter and you've been watching the uh, UFC Five community, uh, a lot of the big content creators, uh, you know, ha having issues with each other uh, about the game. But I try to stay away from all of that. I just want to get the best UFC game possible. And I think out of all the UFCs, this is the one that I've enjoyed the most, other than UFC Two. And I think it is uh, the best one we have um, so far. However, plenty of work to be done. And I can't understate that enough. EA still have leaps and bounds to do. And it's nowhere near as good as it should be, to be honest with you. But it is the best one so far. And I am in love with the new submission system. I do really enjoy it. And once you figure out how to utilize it, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of you guys that agree. So you can see they get the fire here to side control. And for those, for those of you who know me, uh, you'll know that this is my thing if you watched me last year I like getting into side control I feel like it's a very dominant position and then from there you'll see that I always try to look to finish the fights a deep submission escape there from Connor so we rotate back to side control and I'm just going to be real real patient here I'm really liking the DAS and the arm triangle the arm bar of course is the one you see everyone raving on about because it's quite easy to deny the transitions um, however the DAS and the arm triangle are probably my go-to. I think the arm triangle for me at the moment has the highest success rate. And uh, as you guys know, I will always let you know which submissions I think are working. So there will be a video probably sh showcasing that soon and coming out shortly on why I think the arm triangle is at the moment probably the best submission in the game. And we're switching over here to using the GOAT. And that is John Jones, who's now out of his fight with Stipe Miocic, which is a bit sad because... I was looking forward to seeing him win and then retire. However, we'll have to wait probably another year until we see that. So, you see, I shoot for um, a single here and I turn it. Great job from my opponent in denying it. And I'm just going to be patient. One thing you'll notice is that a lot of these fights do finish um, in either round one or round two. And grappling is the way forward. So I said this last year and a lot of people didn't really want to hear it that doesn't mean you have to grapple every single fight and it can be only play style you'll see that from videos i've got coming out in the future that i have my striking has evolved and it's got better and i can finish fights using my strike and it's just that grappling there's a higher differential in skill rating and skill level i think between the grappling and there is the stand up the stand up with the block breaking you can really look to get you know easy-ish finishes if i'm being honest you get a lot of lower level players win fights just through block breaking whereas on the ground once you understand the mechanics and the systems i think it's a lot less likely and i think that there is a bigger skill gap between how you fight on the ground and you will see it i mean um in all the videos i'm going to upload where i'm grappling and I'm, I'm fighting guys in division 20 you'll still see that there's quite a clear difference in level on the ability of the ground and i think it's the easiest way of doing things so you can see here what i'm doing 
is I'm struggling, I'm getting my opponent's stamina down, I'm remaining patient. From this position, you can also punch as well. Um, what I didn't do, as you can see, he's got the submission bar. His submission bar still got a little bit on it, and uh, due to that, he was able to force a last-minute escape. However, coming into it this time, go into the arm triangle, get the deny, which drains the stamina, and then I instantly go arm triangle, you can see submission bar is completely empty so it results in the tap so it's all about draining that submission bar holding r1 to force their stamina to come down and then once their stamina is down look to lock in the submission be careful for fakes don't bite on fakes which is another thing i saw a lot of people saying that submissions are really overpowered but i think romero done a very good job of breaking down um how to use the submissions and um, a shout out to romero because he posts great tutorial videos so he done an excellent job in showcasing what to do and once you really learn uh, the, the mechanics of the new ground game and use it to your advantage, you'll realise that it's not necessarily what some people are calling overpowered. There is routes and avenues to escape. In fact, I think sometimes, or in majority of the circumstances, it's actually hard to submit people with the new system. But um, that being said, if you guys need any help with it, watch Romero's video, or if you'd like me to make a video on it, happy to do so. But Romero's done an absolutely fantastic job in his 25 minute long video. If I remember, I'll put the link in the description, and um, you guys can go check that out. But you can see here, the cage takedowns are still one of my go-to. Um, you'll see that a lot of these videos I shoot a single or a double, and um, they, they seem a lot easier to deny this year, but that may just be a placebo, or maybe what I want to believe. But they seem a lot easier to deny my opponents are having a higher success rate in denying my takedown attempts. So it's more and more evident that I'm going to be using the cage to get them down. And once I do get them down again, back into side control, doing what I normally do, being really, really patient. Um, I do think these side control um, deniers uh, feel a lot stronger this year. I'm seeing a lot more success rate, even with people that don't have good ground games, like I could be using Connor. And hold people in side control for a really, really long time, which is something that probably does need to be looked at and um, addressed with the, the next patch. However, um, I've always had good side control when I'm using someone like um, Habib. It's going to be very, very hard for you to, to get out of this position. So you can see, being extremely patient, um, these strikes really should be counting as significant strikes, to be honest with you. Not quite sure how they don't. And again, that's something I feel like needs to be addressed because there's times where I've held someone here the whole round and um, after we go out, their face is an absolute mess, but I had like four significant strikes, which again, to me, doesn't make too much sense. Um, one thing you will notice is holding your opponents in side control, you will get a lot of doctor stoppages. This is not something I'm going to... I don't really want to promote. Um, I was thinking about doing a video on it just so EA can address it or getting in touch with someone so game changes they can speak to EA. The doctor stoppages are meant to have a really low uh, percentage chance of actually happening. I have had a lot of doctor stoppages and I mean a tremendous amount and against not against good high level fighters and also against a like the actual fighters they're picking so for instance john jones find the easiest way of getting a john jones out of there is putting him in side control and just elbowing his head until we get a doctor stoppage but um we'll see uh, maybe that's something that's been addressed with the latest patch because we don't have any patch notes which is fantastic great job ea um so yeah we don't know i don't know if that's already been fixed but it's just something that i thought that definitely needs to be fixed because i was getting a lot of doctor stoppages and you can see here with this fight we are starting in round two using islam makachev who is undoubtedly pound for pound number one especially because we're not going to see john jones fight until maybe another year um absolutely phenomenal islam is and he's probably my most used fighter on the game especially to start with i really like using him his stand up still should feel a bit better than it actually currently does to be honest with you but on the ground when it comes to his sambo really shines through and he's just it's just so easy to deny with him. He's got that submission threat. He's just such a complete uh, MMA fight. And I'm really happy that he got to showcase his skill. And, you know, show the world that, that he can strike. And people are going to be like, yes, Volk was on 10 days notice. Yes, everyone knows that he stepped in last minute. And that is just what Volk does. He's uh, an absolute legend of the sport. But don't take anything away from Islam. Because that was absolutely beautiful. I think Demetrius Johnson even said in his breakdown of the fight that that weapon is there. Um, he tried it in the first fight a couple of times, but it landed absolutely beautifully. So, um, just more than well done to Islam. He is the pound for pound number one. I will be making a video of him 
in the future. But you can see here, just just stay patient. Throwing strikes keep my GA high, and I'm actually coming up against an opponent who's quite good. And I believe in the first round, if I'm correct, he knocked me down two or three times, which is why I'm a bit tentative of um, getting up and really taking my time. And I feel like the denial period has been increased. Um, it's a lot easier to get deniers even from the bottom after building GA. Um, but that's why I'm being a bit more patient and uh, less aggressive than I'm usually being. But one thing you'll notice that I use a lot more grounder pound, which is something that I started to use towards the back end of UFC 4 because I found that you could actually get quite a few finishes with it. But it's something that I'm very well utilising in um, UFC 5. The grounder pound is definitely very effective, as you see there, another um, triangle finish. And now I believe this gameplay clip here is either Division 18 or Division 20. And you can see it's a non-title fight against a Hamzat Chemayev, who you can, yeah, you can definitely tell what division this is straight away just because of the play style he's looking to approach. But you can see that I'm very, very calm. I'm not going to panic here. GSP is absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to upload a video um, using him because I've enjoyed using him. But yeah, you can see from the get-go the, the linear progression throughout the gameplay clips. You can see how I start to get more confident and uh, get a better understanding of the gameplay. And I think you can tell by my opponent's ability, especially how this Hamza Chamayev player came out. That is such a high division thing to do. Come out, instantly try guillotine someone, press forward, clinch. Um, and unfortunately, it's the same thing as last year. To get into the top 100 or, let's say, top 300s, to be one of the quote-unquote top-level players, you still will get players abusing certain mechanics. I've even come up against the elbow spamming, which is somehow still a thing, which absolutely amazes me. Um, but nevertheless, it's just something that you've got to deal with. And you can see here, one of the ways I do deal with this sort of play style is using someone like GSP, who is just an all-round MMA fighter, there's no avenue the fight takes where I don't really feel comfortable. Um, the only thing that I'd say is probably cause for concern is I don't want to take too many on the chin. And in terms of boxing, I don't feel as comfortable. Obviously, at slight reach disadvantage as well. But coming into taking the fight to the ground, I have absolutely no issue being off my back or on top. And you can see that when I am on top here, I'm going to remain very, very patient. I'm going to look to drain stamina. Um, this is only a three-round fight. So my output can be increased where where I need it to be, and I don't need to mitigate it over five rounds. I am a player that is I definitely favour a five round fight because the the first round I normally take off just to take reads, and then the second and third is normally um, draining my opponent's stamina on the ground. But you can see here I'm absolutely butchering um, Chamayev's face with his elbows, and this is where I get a lot of doctor stoppages. To be honest with you is because I do such great work in the crucifix and side control and um, the new damage system and the way it's displayed on um, fighters faces is uh, really really good it's something I think EA have done a stellar job with and um, I'm very happy to see I mean look at all the blood trickling everywhere and this this is realistically what's going to happen um, and this is how I win uh, a lot of my fights is you just get them down to the ground Look for some mission finishes where possible if they have no stam. Other than that, you can see the, the difference in control level, the difference in not rushing and not wasting my positions, not wasting stamina. You can see uh, he, he got to a position where he could get up. He went to reverse into side control. Um, I even postured up and I could rain down strikes. What did I opt to do? Get straight back into side control where I was having good success rate. And... Then I go knee on belly and rather than rain down strikes and risk him uh, catching it and going to half guard or just reversing the position in general, I jump straight to top mount and I'm keeping him guessing which is the absolute main thing. When you're coming up against players that are also similar level to you, um, the main thing you want to do is keep them guessing. You don't want them to be able to guess your, you know, your next move. You've got to be unpredictable and mix it up. And you can see start of this round I did shoot for a takedown which unfortunately was out of range for. He goes straight in for the clinch, and look, you can see there, because I'm against the cage, he's he's looking to get a takedown. I shoot, he does a great job in the nine, he goes for his, doesn't get it, and we're against the cage, so I'm at threat here of getting clinched and taken to the, um, the cage wall, and then he drags me down, or he's just going to shoot a double. So what I do is, as soon as we disengage, I shoot, and I turn the takedown, and we're back into side control again, a position he doesn't want to be in, because we saw what happened in the first round, done a great job with the deniers good job with the fakes and 
excellent work with the elbows and so you see a posture up here rain down some strikes being really really patient he's moving around a lot i'll see if i can get a free transition to side control i didn't which is an indication that his stamina is still in quite a decent position so i have more work to do so what i opted to do was rain down that elbow he wasn't moving his head so i didn't feel like there was a risk of him uh, dodging it and then we're back onto the feet but even if we did get back onto the feet, I could still feel more than comfortable enough to take him down um, at will or, if need be, keep the fight on the feet because I've done so much damage now to his face and his head health that um, the, the cuts are already going to open up more and more and um, the more he's on the feet, the more likely is the doctor was going to come in and potentially look to stop the fight. So he does a good job here of um, getting me into the dark. So I could see it was the transition he was going for, but overall I was not too worried because I, I felt like I had the stamina advantage. And um, although this opponent was probably on the higher end of the divisions, this, like I said, this was either 18 or Division 20, somewhere in that realm, um, he probably has figured out the submission system and those deniers. I wasn't overly worried um, just because I'm more than confident in... Um, in getting out and you can see here rather than posturing up like I did in the the last round up to take the back and flatten him out so you see flatten him out start raining down some strikes and this is where you can see the confidence growing from when you saw the first gameplay clips where you can still see I was a bit new a bit tentative and then to now where I'm transitioning uh, into beautiful uh, submissions beautiful job of ground the pounder look at Jemayev's face absolutely beautiful battered i mean his corner should really be throwing something in right now or the doctor should be stopping it um like i said because of the division i mean i know he's good at denying the sub so i'm more than happy to sit here and get off these strikes and absolutely you know sort of stat pad in a way i, I go for the arm bar here i did think that i wasn't going to get it but i knew i'd end up getting back up the only reason i went for it there's not too much time on the clock um Get on top, let my stamina recover before trying to posture up. Um, he actually goes for the gallop, which was a mistake. And just because of how long's left, I decided to posture up. Rain down some strikes here, and I think I finished with a big elbow here. And look, look at the visual. I mean, that is not how you want to be going back to your corner. But again, this is why the cut man's paid uh, a big salary. I think the the doctor, or the ringside physician, should really step in there. But as um, as this final round plays out, and you'll see how this. Um, this fight finishes. I hope that this guy, this showcases to you how you can mix in your submissions and how you can mix in your um, ground pound to absolutely outclass and outshine your opponents. And um, this year, there's a vast majority of ways you can finish the fights on the ground. It doesn't just need to be submissions, but if you work in and chain and everything, um, you will be a really good fighter. So. I hope this has shown you how I got to Division 20. Any queries or questions, please let me know in the comments below. But like I said, once again, thank you for thank you guys for all the support and um, I'll see you next week for another upload and hopefully today for a stream. Have a good day. Thank you all.